Now, Dr. Williams, what do you think are the biggest challenges this team will face on this mission? You know, I think overall it's the adaptation of the body to that unique environment. In the absence of gravity, they'll be losing bone density, they'll be, uh, their muscles will be affected, their physiologic conditioning. So all of these changes, they're evaluating exercise protocols to prevent them from happening. Now, when uh, Chris Hadfield came back, we all heard about how he felt when he came back, how weak he was, and how he was getting his strength back. As, as a physician, when you hear about people going for a year, what are your concerns medically for them? So overall, the body is deconditioned. In fact, NASA uses bed rest studies to be able to evaluate how the human body will respond to being in space. It's almost like being admitted to the hospital and staying in bed for a year. So needless to say, we want to prevent these changes from taking place. So the crew has a rigorous exercise protocol. They use resistive exercise bands to simulate weightlifting. They have a treadmill available to them, a cycle ergometer. And all of this is to maintain their physiologic conditioning. But we're also interested in how their behavior changes in space, whether they become bored, whether there's sufficient activities for them to do, how their reaction time changes, all of these things will be evaluated. Because there have been missions that lasted a year, right? The, the Russians did them back in the 80s, but they were, it was on the Mir station, it was much smaller, there was less human contact, there was less of an emphasis on these measures to keep people in shape physically and, and psychologically. How do you think it'll be different uh, on the International Space Station? Well, you know, fundamentally, we have much better technology today to be able to monitor how the human body responds. And, you know, most of us, when we go out and run, we wear body-worn sensors that connect wirelessly with various devices. And, uh, of course, NASA, we can use the same technology, download important physiologic information. But to get ready for humans to go to Mars, where it's six months going to Mars in microgravity, six months coming back, we have to do missions like this. I mean, is there, do you sort of wonder that at some point we have to be realistic that a human body can only take so much that, you know, the bone density, the, that, that we'll lose so much calcium, the bone density will go down. We can't plan on sending somebody for five years. I mean, is there a limit? Well, you know, that's a really great question, but I think we have to go back and look at science fiction. 2001, a space odyssey where we have rotating space stations and we can create artificial gravity. And in that case, we might be able to prevent a lot of these changes from taking place. For me, what's exciting is watching humans go beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we're using the space station to do the research so that will ultimately take us either back to the moon, onto Mars, to an asteroid. We don't know the destination yet, but it's very exciting. Now, we keep talking about the twin study, and, and I do understand that it must be interesting to see two people essentially identical, one in space, one who stays on, here on Earth. But they keep talking about the genetics of it as well. Do, are they actually thinking that there's a change to DNA in space or just to see if they've got the same genes, how, do, how is one affected by space and one is not? It's more the latter. And, you know, in traditional medicine, we've used genetic studies and twin studies over the years to evaluate how different people respond to different environmental conditions, whether that increases the risk of disease or not. And if you essentially have an identical genome as you would in a twin, then in that situation, you're able to identify and look for those changes to see if anything like that is happening. So it should be a really exciting mission. Okay, so let's hope everything goes well. They spend a year, they're healthy, they come back down, they will be exhausted and weak, we're told. How do you think their recovery is going to go? So I think the recovery will take time. There's absolutely no question about this. Generally speaking, you could take the mission length and add another six months to that. So usually after a six-month mission, it takes about six months to a year to get back to normal on Earth. And I think after a one-year mission, it's going to be roughly about the same, six months to a year, if not longer, to be able to get back to normal bone density, normal muscle strength, and aerobic conditioning. And are you happy to watch this as an observer, or does part of you say, oh, I wish I was going back up? You know, I flew in space with Scott Kelly in 19, uh, or in 2007 on STS-118, and I was really, really excited. Scott's a tremendous astronaut, and I wish I was up there with him and wish him all the best.